Today, I'm going to share with you the story of a girl who never wanted to be a businesswoman. My parents came from China to France 32 years ago. They had 18 francs in their pockets. They didn't know anybody, they didn't know the language. And I was born in Paris two years later. Since I was a kid, they taught me strong values, the cult of excellence, but also, and mostly, the value of security, which means I need to have a stable and noble job. So it was easy. Either I become a lawyer or a doctor. <laughs> that was my life plan. So you can imagine that with the value of security and stability embedded in my mind, that I would never dare to think about being an entrepreneur one day. God, no. It was considered way too risky. And every time when you turn on TV and you see all the CEO from Fortune 500 or any famous entrepreneur that we all know inspire all of us, it was always a white male. So my brain unconsciously associated this figure with this image. I never felt it was meant for me, and it never even crossed my mind. So I just pursued science studies, then went to La Sorbonne Law School, perfectly ticking the boxes according to my traditional aspiration and what I thought society wanted me to become. I had my first internship in the law firm when I was 24 in order to prepare for the bar exam. This was a big moment in my life because this was the consecration of all these years of study and the beginning of my law career. But there was a problem. I didn't feel profoundly passionate. And I remember feeling tremendous guilt because I was always told that you should be passionate about your job, that you will find fulfillment and happiness in your work. And I didn't feel any of those. And one day, it just hit me. We were at this meeting room, and there was this big table, and the clients were lined up here on one side, and the lawyers on the other side. And I suddenly realized, that, oh God, I hate lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> and I am on the wrong side of the table. I want the lawyers to work for me, not the other way around. <laughs> so I went away, and, but I didn't know where to go, because my study brought me there. So I felt completely lost, and this led eventually to a deep identity crisis. I, um, I was trying to figure out who I was and what was my purpose. So during two years, I tried to look for it everywhere. I went from working in the Ministry of Finances to working in a private bank in Shanghai, then working with Chinese investors. But even though I didn't know what I wanted to do, I had this energy and perseverance, this grit to try different activities and test different paths, and I was not afraid. And through these two years of searching my very own path, I've come to realize two things. First, I don't want to have a role of advisor in a company. I want to be the actor of a project from the beginning until the end. And I want to lead and be the one who decides the orientation of the company. Because when you're a lawyer or when you're a financial advisor, you only have one side of a project. And you don't create it. You don't make it alive. You don't see it evolve. And at the end, you're not the one who decides. So I knew that I wanted to be a creator rather than an advisor. Second, regarding passion. I've come to realize that work is like love relationships. You know, you have this super hot, intense and passionate relationship with that super hot guy, Brad. I don't know what's a hot guy named here. Um, Honza? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go with Honza. <laughs> so with Honza, it's super hot and dreamy and passionate. But with him, careful girls, it lasts one month. <laughs> and you have that other guy. Henry, yeah. You didn't even like him the first time, nor the second, nor the third. But it was with Henry that throughout the year, you happened to have built strong foundation, and in something that you have both worked on, and you love him even more each day. And each day, the relationship becomes stronger. So 
I was looking for this love at first sight, passionate work, but I was wrong. I realized that, for me at least, the professional vocation was not love at first sight. It's something that I needed to nurture, to work on, and to cultivate every single day. You are building a healthy foundation, and then only brick by brick, you work on building a real lasting passion. So, when I start, when you create a company, there is this one myth that you need to have that passion or that revolutionary idea in order to plunge in. When I started my travel company in China at 26 years old, like Henry, at the beginning, I didn't like many things about my work, and I wasn't sure the idea was revolutionary either. I just focused on a new market, a new customer, and a new way to address them. And the key was execution, execution, execution. It was a tremendous amount of pressure without having any certainty that we were ever going to succeed one day. But it's only through perseverance and obstinacy that I started to truly appreciate what I was doing and that passion came progressively. So, and there is this other myth. We often say that our drive as entrepreneurs is to change the world or make the world a better place. I'll be honest with you, my drive was actually really selfish. It was a selfish need for accomplishment, realization and personal success. That's all. And in order to achieve that goal, I had to put on this mask of the harsh and strong leader figure because every day I'm dealing with males who are 20 to 30 years older than me, and some of them have this misbelief that a young woman cannot be a strong leader, or a young woman is less of a fighter, or she doesn't have what it takes. So I need to prove them up front with my delivery and my, and my result. I also need to federate and manage a team who happens to be 10 to 30 years older than me. So you can imagine the amount of pressure and responsibility. I had to build a thick skin throughout the years in order to keep moving forward. Otherwise, my state of mind would have become a burden on a daily basis, and this would have completely paralyzed me when tough decisions have to be taken. So, my life basically turned around my team, my partners, my investors. For the first two years, I would wake up every day at 5 a.m. and work until midnight. I had two offices, one in Paris and one in Beijing, and I would fly every two weeks, two weeks in Paris, two weeks in China, two weeks in Paris, two weeks in China for two years, just to make sure that everything was coordinated perfectly. I have, of course, no vacation and forget any social life. Clearly not. <laughs> and, but it's not even that, that, that I didn't allow myself to. It's just that I was so obsessed with the result of my company that nothing else mattered. Often, I would wake up at 3 a.m. in the middle of the night just because I would be thinking so damn hard of a deal. Like, oh my god, we forgot to put that close on the contract and I would immediately call my Beijing office. So there's at least one cool thing to have a team split in different time zones. So you have always someone, someone awake to call in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> um, having this intense schedule and clearly unbalanced life, I think I reached both physical and mental fatigue several times. And the more we were growing, the tougher it got. And I naively thought that the more we would grow, the easier it would get? No. <laughs> but every time I wanted to give up, I just forbade myself. People are counting on me. I have investors who bet their money on this. I have partners, mentors, who gave their trust and put their reputation on the line for this. But mostly, I have a team. I have this amazing team who is making magic happen every day, and without whom none of this would have been possible. I have their salaries and their families on my shoulder. They are counting on me to deliver at my best. I couldn't give up. It was not about me anymore. Now I'm starting to realize that my selfish drive is completely shifting. You are creating something 
that is way bigger than yourself. You have embarked other beings with you in your ship, and as a captain, you have to lead by example and keep moving forward. There was no me anymore. It was us. And the more we move forward together, the more our ship is impacting other people's life, not only internally, but also externally. Last year, we received um, it was an email from a Chinese client. There was a video inside, and it was a video of him and his family during a trip in Morocco that we organized for them. It was the first time they were outside China. They never traveled abroad before. So he showed us the daughter playing the beach of Esaviera. We saw them uh, with the blue houses of Chef Chavon. It looks really fun and cool. And at the end of the clip, he thanked us for making this possible. He was smiling and looked so happy. It was a big moment for the team. We were so moved, proud and amazed. It was not about us anymore. It's funny. I knew that building a business should be hard, that scale it would be even harder. Yes, yes, resilience, resilience. But I had no idea what fulfillment it would bring on a human level. When I observed the evolution of my drive throughout my entrepreneurial journey, the drive is completely different today. We merged to a French group. Our company has 1,000 employees now and we are helping hundreds of thousands of people traveling every year. This number still amazes me every day. And what was at the beginning a selfish need for accomplishment progressively transformed into an altruistic drive for collective prosperity, impacting not only me, but our team, our investors, our clients, and the institution. And all of that without even noticing it. And that moment, it was not about me anymore. The strength and the passion have completely risen to a whole other level. And this is the energy that helps me keep moving forward and get up every day. Today, I profoundly love what I do. Each day, I'm learning more, I'm discovering more, and my passion becomes stronger. I've got to learn Chinese throughout the process which brought me closer to my family. I was not supposed to be a businesswoman, but I chose that path, and it was not easy, especially not as a young woman. But I'm realizing, only in hindsight, that all the dots were connected, and this was my very own path that I chose for personal growth. What I want to share with you is that We are not born with passion, we create it. And we are not born entrepreneurs, we become one. Thank you. Thank you.